You're not going to intimidate. That's what Trump does to try to intimidate. We have to fight back. We're trying to do the world. We're, in a gen we're trying to be gentlemen in this world, the You're Democrats. Right. You are gangsters. You are gangsters. You're a little punk. You're a softy. You're a nobody. Your movies suck. You're trash. You're trash. You're done. You're done after this guy. You're done. I mean, this has to be the most New York City sounding argument ever. F-bombs, random threats, calling each other gangsters, and a bunch of other empty names. If Robert De Niro wasn't outside of Trump's trial to highlight how dangerous he'll be as president again, I would have thought this was a movie set. This is my neighborhood, downtown New York City. I grew up here and feel at home in these streets. I feel comfortable. The Twin Towers fell just over here. Just over there, this part of the city was like a ghost town. But we vowed we would not allow terrorists to change our way of life. And we started the Tribeca Festival to bring people back. I love this city. I love this city. I don't want to destroy it. Donald Trump wants to destroy not only the city, but the country, and eventually he could destroy the world. I don't mean to scare you. No, no, wait, maybe I do mean to scare you. If Trump returns to the White House, you can kiss these freedoms goodbye that we all take for granted. And elections, forget about it. That's over, that's done. If he gets in, I can tell you right now, he will never leave. So there's a lot going on here with the Biden camp's decision to send a group to warn the public about Trump right where he's been barking nearly every day about how unfair it is to be prosecuted. But it wasn't just De Niro that was there to speak out. The fight for a lot of us didn't end on January 6th, that evening when we went home. The fight still continues now. What happened that day was an attempt to halt, to overthrow uh, an election. Donald Trump is the greatest threat to our democracy and the safety of communities across the country today. He has encouraged and continue to encourage political violence. We've been called traitors just today. We were all called traitors on January 6th for doing our job. And yes, we protected Republicans. We protected Democrats alike. It's not about the story that we don't agree with. Political violence is never acceptable. But you have a presidential candidate, you have a presidential candidate that champions it, that encourages it, that supports it. We cannot have that. I'm just one representative of the hundreds of police officers that were assaulted that day by Donald Trump supporters, inspired by his lies. The lies that continue to this day to inspire my fellow Americans to turn against their fellow Americans, to turn against police officers. At the end of the, the day, this election is about Donald Trump and his vision for the office of the President of the United States. Not as a public servant who answers to the elected, to the people who elected him, but as an authoritarian who answers to and serves only himself. We've got Robert De Niro and two of the Capitol Police officers that have kind of become the faces of the law enforcement officials that were attacked on January 6th. And it did show a sharp contrast between the political opportunists that slapped on Trump ties and mimicked his talking points versus Biden backers that voiced what many Americans are worried about. The contrast here pretty much writes itself. As we speak, Donald Trump's somewhere uh, fighting for himself, maybe taking a power nap. Uh, and we've seen him for weeks and for months now. Uh, we've seen the ramblings of an unhinged, power-hungry, self-centered man, uh, both here at Mar-a-Lago, on True Social, wherever he may be. Uh, but the thing is, this isn't new for Donald Trump. It's how he spent his four years in the White House. It's how he spent every moment since he lost the 2020 election. And in one month, Americans are going to have an opportunity to witness in prime time the clear contrast between Donald Trump, who's a chaos agent waging a self-obsessed campaign of revenge and retribution, go up against Joe Biden, who's a leader who fights for Americans every single day. As the president said when he challenged Trump to debate, 
president has a list of things he'd like to talk to Trump about if Trump does in fact show up in Atlanta on June 27th. The event also unsurprisingly triggered the former president who scampered to Truth Social. I never knew how small, both mentally and physically, wacko former actor Robert De Niro was. Today, De Niro, who suffers from an incurable case of Trump derangement syndrome, commonly known in the medical community as TDS, was met outside the courthouse with a force far greater than the radical left, MAGA. Robert, whose movies, artistry, and brand have gone way down in value since he entered the political arena at the request of crooked Joe Biden, looked so pathetic and sad out there. Where have you gone? Joe DiMaggio, he says so much and it means so little. When it comes to choosing someone that won't destroy the country or use it to strictly serve his own interests, why does it matter if Trump thinks De Niro is a small person? If he suffers from catchphrase diagnoses like Trump derangement syndrome, which could actually be applied to his followers, or if his movies have gone down in value. By the way, he's been nominated for another Oscar this year, so there's no basis for any of his criticisms. He just puts them out there to insult opponents and generate MAGA anger towards him. None of that changes the fact that Trump has openly told the country that he has plans to transform it to give him dictator-like powers. So MAGA responded with more emptiness. You know, my question for Robert De Niro is what have you done for New York City, Robert mm. De Niro? What have you done? Is there a building with your name on it? Have you built skyscrapers? Has the skyline of New York changed because of all of your vision? No. He sent the campaign to do a speech across the street from the jury trial. And I don't, I actually think that that will probably be, it could be that they could file a lawsuit about that because I think that it is against the law and against the rights of a defendant and the former president and that it's uh, tampering with the jury, I would, I would say. That's my opinion. I will stick to it. And the best that Biden can do is roll out a washed up actor. And don't worry, my remarks will be shorter than the Irishman. I won't make you suffer for three hours. But the best they can do is roll out a washed up actor. First of all, Jason Miller definitely watched and enjoyed the Irishman despite it being three hours long. And maybe I missed it when Dana Perino was concerned about jury tampering when Trump and his lackeys were disparaging and outing them during jury selection so that they weren't even comfortable being seated. Trump Jr. was still talking about jurors and their family safety as the trial wrapped up too. All of these conservative cases, the press follows them, they hounds them, they wouldn't be able to show up to their children's schools if they acquitted Trump, which they obviously should be doing based on any reasonable, even modicum look at the case. But still, this whole idea to almost copy Donald Trump's strategy of conducting press conferences outside of the courthouse to convince the public that he's guilty might come off the same way it did for Trump, that he's panicked over the outcome. It politicizes the trial, better to have waited. And then what was said, with all due respect to Mr. De Niro, who's a wonderful, law, uh, wonderful actor, I mean, really, the people up for grabs in this election, are they going to be... Uh, Donald Trump wants to destroy New York, destroy America, and destroy the world. And if you reelect him, he's never going to leave office. He's going to make himself a tyrant for life. Are those the kind of credible statements that are going to cause people who don't like Biden and don't like Trump but are trying to figure out who to vote for? Are they going to cause people to say, well, geez, you now told me he wanted to destroy our country? Of course he did. The people who believe that are already in the Biden camp. That's not who they should be trying to, to reach out to. Sadly, I do think Karl Rove made a decent point except for the dismissal of how dangerous Donald Trump is based on his own plans for absolute power. But for the Biden campaign to get these well-known figures out to tell everyone what they already know may only force each side to burrow deeper into their corners and fight over who's a washed up actor and how pathetic Trump has conducted himself in court. Biden supporters or anti-Trump folks already know how dangerous he is. And MAGA already told us they want a dictator to rule over them. But the voters that are somehow still in the middle maybe don't fully believe either argument and will need something more substantive than arguments in the middle of the street. Maybe appeal to voters that are sick of funding the genocide of Palestinians carried out by Netanyahu, a policy that both Biden and Trump happily support. But in response to people like me, the Biden camp did reveal their reasoning and how it adds to their long game of winning the election, despite the outcome of the trial. So maybe they do know what they're doing. Why did the Biden campaign decide to come here today? Because you all are here. We've been incessantly covering this day in and day out, and we want to remind the American people ahead of the next debate, of the first debate on June 27th, of the unique, persistent, and growing threat that Donald Trump poses to the American people and to our democracy. So since you all are here, we're here communicating that message as we will do day in, day out until the debate in Atlanta.